So Gmail ads are the perfect type of ads to get your clients attention because I'm not sure about you, but I spend a lot of time basically just browsing my emails. In fact, I could spend up to two hours a day just in my email inbox. So they're a great way of reaching your ideal client. Now I wanna show you an example of what these Gmail ads look like. I'm gonna go into my Gmail inbox and then I'm gonna go over into the promotions folder. And as you can see over here, I got one that says uh, Google Ads and Salesflow. And when I click on this one, it expands and it basically shows me a giant image and it also shows me a call to action. And that's exactly what we'll be creating today. Now, if you're brand new to Google Ads, I want you to check out my Google Ads Masterclass for beginners, absolute beginners, where I show you every single thing that I wish I knew when I started six years ago with Google Ads. I'll talk you through all the campaign types and I'll really help you get set up making awesome campaigns so that you can start making money with Google Ads. So link is in the description below, but now let me show you how to make that Gmail ad. Today, we'll be making a Gmail ad that looks pretty much like the one I showed you. And what I want you to do is go into your Google Ads account. And once you're in your Google Ads account, I want you to click on new campaign. Now, some of you might not see the screen. It's no problem. It just means you're not in expert mode. And I'll link one of my switch to expert mode videos down below. And you don't need to be an expert. It just means that you're gonna see every single report available to you in Google Ads, so it's a very good thing. Switch over to expert mode, you'll be doing yourself a favor and you will thank yourself for it. So I'm gonna click on new campaign, and after I click on new campaign, I'm gonna go into leads, because most of you are probably looking for leads, and the next thing I'm gonna do is just leave this conversion goal section as is. Now I'm gonna click on continue, and the next thing I need to do is choose a type of ad. Now, you'll notice there's no Gmail ad type over here. Well, that's because Gmail ads are actually called discovery ads, and we'll have a proper discussion about that a little bit later on in the video, but you're gonna select discovery over here. And the next thing you're gonna do is just put in your business website. Now, this doesn't have to be the page that you're sending them to. It could just be the website that you're sending them to. And I'm just gonna put that in and I'm gonna say Gmail tutorial, just so I know. And I'm gonna say continue. And I'm gonna say start new campaign. Once I do that, you have to choose a basically a conversion that you want them to do. Now, all of these actions over here are extremely valuable to my business. So uh, getting directions, phone call leads, but the one that I want is for this specific page. You see small budget, big results, free Google Ads workshop. So what I want them to do is I want them to sign up for this workshop and that's the sign up over here. And I've got that selected over here. Now, I don't want you to get too caught up with this stuff if you've never done it before. Um, mainly, you just need some sort of action that you want them to take. And if you don't have any conversion set up, that's perfectly fine too. If you wanna just start sending traffic and see if you can get leads, I recommend that you get your conversion set up, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have that set up right now. The next thing you wanna do is you're gonna choose a location. Now in my case, I'm gonna say South Africa, but you might wanna target maybe a different country or you might target four places at once. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you click on enter another location and you click on advanced search, you can add in a few of the cities that you plan on targeting. So for example, we could go Chicago, um, uh, we could go New York, uh, we could go London, and we could maybe go Johannesburg as well. And as you can see, if I zoom out, all the way out, it'll basically give me this world map and it'll show all the cities I've selected, but it's not really gonna do us any good until I start zooming in. And then you'll start seeing where you've selected. Chicago's somewhere over, there we go. New York, we got New York over there, all right? And also, let's say you have a store and you wanna just show 
ads to everyone within a 10 or 15 or 20 mile radius to your store. You can click on this little button over here that says radius and now you put in your address and then it will come up with a little circle that targets everyone within a 20 mile radius and your Gmail ads will only show to people within that radius and you're going to say save after that. So now I've got all of my locations over here and the next thing you want to do is you want to also click on just give me a second over here. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is just select the languages that you're working with as well. So here, I'm just gonna say the English language. And then what you wanna do is you wanna select where do you wanna focus on, okay? So this is the most important part. You have to select which bidding strategy you wanna use. Now, here the only option is conversions and you can set a target cost per action. Now, what this basically means is if you know that you're not willing to spend more than $100 or $200 to get a lead or to get a conversion on your website, you can set a target cost per action. However, I'd recommend that you start off with this unchecked and just focusing on conversions because what might happen is you could seriously hinder the performance of your campaign if you don't know what type of conversion to expect for a certain budget. So for example, if it's your first time running Gmail ads, just go with conversions, it's so much simpler. If you're more experienced and you know more or less what your leads and your conversions cost for your other campaigns, then I'd suggest that you start off by setting a target cost per action. And now we get to choose our starting budget. Now, let's say for example, I put a starting budget of $20. I want you to see what happens. When I do that, automatically I'm gonna get this yellow box over here that says, no, Devin, what are you doing? You need to spend more money, you need to spend at least $50 to get you know your, your campaign going and stuff like that. This is a way that Google uses to upsell you. And the reason why they're upselling you is they want you to spend $50 or $100 or $200 because it doesn't really matter if your campaign gets your clients or not. Google will still get paid that amount that you're gonna put in here. My advice to all business owners is to start off small and even if you start off less than what Google recommends, you will still get some traction, you will still get clicks, you will still get your ads seen. Do not be one of those business owners who just wants to spend $1,000 or maybe $500 and you wanna start off big because what's going to happen is as your campaign runs, the most time, well, the time when you waste the most money is actually at the beginning of a campaign. So what you wanna do is you wanna actually start off small, see what your results are, and slowly but surely, you wanna build up once you know where to spend the money and which campaigns are actually making you the most money. Don't just blindly follow Google's recommendation because they get paid anyway, okay? So if you feel like all you can afford is $20, then start off with $20. And I would recommend between $20 or $40 as a good starting point. And if you maybe wanna be more aggressive about it, yes, you can spend more, but just remember that try and spend about 40% of your intended daily budget first before you go like throw the entire budget on an ad that you don't even know is gonna work out or not, okay? And the next thing you wanna do is select next. Now, we're gonna come over here to the targeting section. Now, you know that Google collects a lot of data on everyone. They basically know when you're searching the internet, they know when you're watching YouTube, they know what videos you like, they know what things you search for, they know the things that bother you, they know what time of your life or what period of your life you're going through. In fact, Google will even know if you got a new pet, if you got recently divorced, if you got recently married, if you graduated from college. Google has a scary amount of data on you. Now, in this targeting section, we're basically going to choose audiences based on the data that Google has on them. And we wanna pick the people that are more likely to convert on our ad, right? So if I say add an audience over here, um, it'll give me this little audience section, but I can also click on this new audience piece. And when I do that, I'm gonna be able to select our audience name and we get all of these other options. Now it's your very first time running your very first Gmail ad, so I don't want you to get too caught up or too confused in this stuff. So what I want you to do is go over to interest and detailed demographics, right? This is the part where I was talking about where Google collects all of this data on people and they've got a ton of data on people. So when you click this, you'll get these 
recommended audience types that you can choose. So for example, um, it'll show my ad to people interested in advertising and marketing services, web design and development services, SEO and SEM services. So that's completely fine. Another thing that you can check out, and this is really cool, is you can go to the browse section over here and you can go into something called live events. When you do that, this is what I was talking about. Google has uh, people who have just recently created a business, people who have just recently uh, graduated for college. They've even got life events like marriage, people who have just recently got marriage. Oh, by the way, if you're a wedding photographer and you're running a Gmail campaign, this would be one of the perfect, perfect um, audiences to pick getting married soon. So we're just gonna select that one over there as well because this is just an example anyway. So once you have those audiences, you can also scroll down and you can select demographics. Now demographics is just the type of people that you know would be the most interested in your product or service. So for example, if you sell running shoes for men or if you sell something that's catered towards men, then you can just deselect female and your ads will only show to males. And likewise, you could do vice versa as well. You can also change the age range of the person that you wanna basically advertise to, but that's more or less self-explanatory. Now, you can also do custom segments, custom audiences, remarketing ads, but I don't really wanna flood you with all of that information straight out the gate. I will make a second video if you want. Make sure you also like and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you can get notified when I drop one or more of the advanced tutorials. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go and name this explainer audience. And I'm going to say save over here. Now once I do that, you'll notice that I've got this little checkbox over here that says use optimized targeting. Now we need to talk about optimized targeting. Optimized targeting is when Google takes the audience that you've picked, it looks for people who have more or less the same interest as those audiences, and it basically expands the audience so that it catch, captures those people as well. What this is good for is if you have an audience that you know that works, and you're looking for more audiences that work, that will convert on your ads, then select optimize targeting. If you're just experimenting and you're starting out, I would recommend that you don't pick this option because what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna burn through your budget faster. So I would recommend that if you have a good size audience and $20 is not gonna go that far anyway, don't choose optimized targeting because it'll just burn through your, um, it'll burn through your budget faster and it might even get you um, results that are kind of diluted because they showed your ads to everyone, all right? So I'm gonna untick that box and I'm gonna say next. Next, we get to the fun stuff and this is creating the perfect Gmail ad. So the first thing you wanna do is choose your final URL and your final URL is the basically the landing page that you wanna send them. So when they click on the ad, they go to that specific landing page. Now I'm gonna select this one over here. The next thing you need to do is you need to choose an image. So I'm gonna click on images and I am gonna select this image. Now I'm selecting this image for a particular reason because I wanna show you the ratio. So if I look at this blue piece over here that says selected two ratios, when I click on it, you'll see it says one to one and it says this one by nine, one by one selected, okay? Now basically what that is is it's it's a way that your audience gets to see the type of cropping that you have on your image. So if I uncheck this and I select one to one, notice that they'll only see this piece in my ad, okay? If I select this one, they will see a more landscape version and I want those two ratios. And if I select this one over here, you'll notice that either the wording is cut off or either my body's cut off and it looks so weird when you just see free Google Ads Workshop with just the arm over there. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm not gonna select that one at all. I'm just gonna select these two and you'll know they're selected because they've got these little ticks next to them. And I'm gonna say select two ratios. Also, if you're looking for a great place to get images, graphics, fonts, and you don't wanna go through all of the hazard of like buying stock images one by one and you just wanna license everything, check out Envato Elements, I'll link them down below. They've got every single type of thing that you want. If you want pictures of people fishing, if you want pictures of people working, if you want videos, if you want 
anything, check out Invato Elements. It's really cool. You pay one price and you can license whatever you want on a monthly subscription as well. So it's completely cool and you can download as many things as you want as well. So check it out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Moving on, that has been selected. I'm gonna say save. And now I want you to see what happens. Notice it says, um, let's just wait for it to load. Notice it says headline over here. And notice when I say closed, it'll show me my Gmail ad over here, but it's saying all properties. So I wanna change that to just Gmail over there. So as you can see here, we've got my picture and this is what the ad will look like when it's closed. See, that's basically a Gmail ad over there. Now, there's a couple of things missing, my headline and description, so let's type it out. I'm just gonna say free, um, let's do it this way, free Google Ads Workshop. And I'm gonna say for beginners. And I'm gonna say learn how to stretch your ad budget. There we go. And then I'm gonna say um, free Google Ads workshop for business owners who want big results from small budgets, okay? And as you can see, it's busy populating my ad over here and I've got my image now, I've got my description, I've got my heading over there. And when I close it, this is what it looks like, close. So it'll show a little preview of what they get on the mail. Obviously you want them to click through. Now, a couple of best practices. Try and not put too much wording in your photo that you're selecting from your ad because that will really, it can really mess up your click-through rate if you give them too much to talk about. Common mistake that I see with the business owners that I train is they try and put too much information in the ad. That can be a bad thing. Remember, the job of an ad is just to get somebody to click through and go to your website. And on your website landing page, that's where you explain every single thing and your entire offer to the person. So try and be to the point, try and be as enticing as possible, and try and leave a little bit of mystery as well when they click on it. Don't be so um, upfront and tell them everything about your service. So for example, if you're an electrician, say that you're a qualified electrician and you're more than happy to help them sort out their electrical problems. Don't start listing every single one of your uh, projects that you've worked on and don't start work listing every single one of your qualifications because they can read all of that on the landing page. Give them enough to pique their interest so they click on your ad. You'll also notice that you've got these different ad types as well. So you've got your YouTube ads and you've got your discovery as well. Now somebody might be saying, yeah, but Devin, I just want the Gmail stuff. I don't want YouTube or discovery ads. Unfortunately, Google Ads is rolling them all into one so that you have more reach. So I should rather say, fortunately, they're doing that. Now, when you click on, for example, if you're, you click on YouTube, this is what the ad will look like on YouTube. It's not a proper video ad. It's just a little pop-up banner. Somebody might click through and they go to your landing page that way. Also, in a Discover feed, this is like Google's news app. So you'll notice sometimes when you're scrolling through news articles, in between those news articles, there are some ads. And this is why they're called discovery ads because people are discovering these ads either in their Gmail inbox or they're discovering them on their cell phones when they're browsing through news articles or they discover them on YouTube as well. So they all fall under the umbrella of discovery ads. So we've got our creative over here, we've got our description here. I would recommend that you write about five different headlines and have about five different descriptions as well because that will help Google find the right combination, the right wording combination that's gonna get you the highest click-through rate. So once you're done with all of that, you are going to click next. And I want to show you this because a lot of people are going to run into this particular problem. So as you can see, it's busy thinking, it's busy thinking, it's busy checking for errors. Now um, you'll see over here that it says um, fix these errors in your campaign. So the first thing it will say is your campaign may not perform well 
try and boost your budget to $50. That's Google trying to upsell you. Don't say I didn't tell you. And it's also warning you that your campaign may get very few conversions. Now, I've actually got proof that this is garbage and I'm gonna show it to you at the end of this video. So we can ignore all of that, but I think we did do something wrong in our ads. We probably didn't put our business name. Yep, there we go. Let's put our business name in. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Neptune Design, PTY, LTD, there we go. We're gonna say next, and now we should be able to create the ad. Just waiting on it. It's thinking again, checking for errors again. And there we go. So we've only got those two errors. Like I said, don't worry about it. And I'm going to say publish campaign. Now, once you do that, your ad will be active and we can just go over here to overview and it'll give you this overview menu over here to tell you when you can expect to get results from your campaign. One thing I wanna show you is that, remember we got that error that said I'm not spending enough? Well, I want you to check out this campaign. This is a Gmail and discovery campaign. Um, my budget on here previously, cause I think I paused this once upon a time, it was about $3 a day. For $3 a day, remember they said the minimum should be 50. I got 1,150 clicks on this ad. I got a cost per conversion of $15 and it only cost, it cost me less than $50. So as you can see, even though I wasn't spending the $50 per day, I was still able to get results even on the low budget. And you gotta look out for these upsells because Google Ads is gonna try and upsell you everywhere and they're gonna try and scare you and tell you that your budget is not enough. All right guys, so that's how you make a Gmail ad. Now, if you really wanna get up to speed with Google Ads and you wanna learn all of the stuff in a super fast way so that you can take advantage of Black Friday and the rush towards the end of the year, then I suggest you check out my Google Ads Masterclass for absolute beginners. What we do in that masterclass is we teach you everything you need to know to build great campaigns, what to ignore, and what to focus on, which is really helpful if you're a small business owner and you're just trying to make your budget stretch. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out in the description below. Lastly, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for staying towards the end. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add two videos over here, one for budgets compared, and another one where I show you every type of Google ad with examples so that you can see what they look like, because I think that'll be really interesting to you. Other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.